Hi everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about 15 interesting facts about Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a country located in East Africa, and it's one of the oldest countries in the world. It's also home to a rich history and culture. So without further ado, let's get started. 1. The Ethiopian calendar is different from the Gregorian calendar. There are 13 months in the Ethiopian calendar, which means they are currently in 2015. The Ethiopian calendar is a solar calendar that is based on the ancient Coptic calendar. It is 7 to 8 years behind the Gregorian calendar, which is the most widely used calendar in the world. The Ethiopian calendar has 13 months, each of which has 30 days. The last month, called Pagum, has 5 or 6 days, depending on whether it is a leap year. The Ethiopian calendar begins on September 11th in the Gregorian calendar, the current year in the Ethiopian calendar is 2015. This is because the Ethiopian calendar uses a different system for calculating the date of the Annunciation, which is the event that precedes the birth of Jesus Christ. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church believes that the Annunciation occurred in 5,500 years after the creation of the world, which is seven years before the date that is used in the Gregorian calendar. As a result of this difference in calculation, the Ethiopian calendar is always seven to eight years behind the Gregorian calendar. For example, the year 2023 in the Gregorian calendar is 2015 in the Ethiopian calendar. The Ethiopian calendar is still widely used in Ethiopia, although the Gregorian calendar is also becoming more common. The Ethiopian calendar is used for religious and traditional purposes, while the Gregorian calendar is used for government and business matters. 2. Ethiopians also measure the hours of a day to a different schedule based on the logic that the clock starts when the day does. Ethiopians measure the hours of a day in a modified 12-hour clock system, with the day beginning at dawn, which is considered to be 12 o'clock. This is based on the logic that the clock should start when the day does, rather than at midnight, which is when the day ends in most other parts of the world. Here is an explanation of how the Ethiopian timekeeping system works. The day begins at dawn, which is typically around 6 a.m. in Ethiopia. This is considered to be 12 o'clock. The hours of the day are then numbered from 1 to 12, with 1 being the hour after dawn and 12 being the hour before dusk. Dusk is typically around 5 p.m. in Ethiopia. This is considered to be 12 o'clock again. The hours of the night are then numbered from 1 to 12, with 1 being the hour after dusk and 12 being the hour before dawn. This system may seem confusing at first, but it makes sense when you consider that Ethiopia is located close to the equator, where the days and nights are relatively equal in length throughout the year. This means that the Ethiopian timekeeping system is more closely aligned with the natural cycles of the sun and the moon. The Ethiopian timekeeping system has been in use for centuries, and it is still widely used today. However, there is some pressure to adopt the international 24-hour clock system, especially in business and government circles. It remains to be seen whether the Ethiopian timekeeping system will eventually be replaced by the international system. 3. Ethiopia is the only African country never to have been brought under colonial rule. The Italians tried but failed woefully and were defeated by the solid Ethiopian forces. Ethiopia is the only country in Africa that has never been colonized. This is due to a number of factors, including its strategic location, its strong military, and its fierce independence. In the 19th century, Italy attempted to colonize Ethiopia, but was defeated by the Ethiopian forces at the Battle of Adwa in 1896. This was a major turning point in African history, as it showed that Africans could defeat European colonizers, Ethiopia's independence has been maintained ever since. The country has faced numerous challenges, including famine, drought, and political instability. 
However, it has always managed to overcome these challenges and remain an independent nation. The Ethiopian military is one of the oldest in Africa, and has a long history of fighting against foreign invaders. The Ethiopian people are known for their strong sense of national identity and their determination to maintain their independence. 4. Ethiopia has the world's oldest Bible and the most unique, Ethiopia is home to the world's oldest complete illuminated Christian manuscript, the Garima Gospels. The two manuscripts, which are written in Guizi, an ancient Ethiopian language, are thought to have been written in the 5th or 6th century AD. They are beautifully illustrated with colorful paintings of scenes from the Gospels, the Garima Gospels are unique in several ways. They are the earliest surviving complete illuminated Christian manuscript. Additionally, the paintings in the Garima Gospels are some of the earliest and most beautiful examples of Christian art. The Garima Gospels are a priceless treasure of Ethiopian and world culture. They are a testament to the early history of Christianity in Ethiopia and they are a reminder of the rich artistic and cultural traditions of this ancient country. The Garima Gospels are kept in the Garima Monastery in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. The manuscripts are made of goat skin and are written in Guizi, an ancient Ethiopian language that is no longer spoken by many people. The paintings in the Garima Gospels are thought to have been created by a monk named Abba Garima, the Garima Gospels are a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 5. Ethiopia is home to one of the world's best coffee. In fact, coffee production is huge in Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the birthplace of coffee. Today, Ethiopia is still one of the world's leading producers of coffee. The country's coffee industry is worth billions of dollars and employs millions of people. Ethiopian coffee is known for its rich flavor and aroma, and it is prized by coffee lovers around the world. Ethiopia is the sixth largest producer of coffee in the world. The country produces over 700,000 metric tons of coffee beans per year. Ethiopia is home to over 100 different varieties of coffee. Ethiopian coffee is grown at altitudes of up to 2,000 meters above sea level. The best coffee beans from Ethiopia are grown in the country's highlands. Ethiopian coffee is often roasted light to medium, to preserve its fruity flavor. 6. According to some archaeological findings, Ethiopia is the cradle of humankind, meaning that the earliest fossils of human ancestors have been found there. The Awash Valley in Ethiopia is particularly rich in these fossils, and it has been called, the Cradle of Human Evolution. The oldest fossils of human ancestors found in Ethiopia are 3.4 million years old. These fossils belong to a species called Australopithecus afarensis, which is believed to be the ancestor of all modern humans. Other important fossil discoveries have been made in Ethiopia, including the remains of Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and Homo sapiens, the Awash Valley is not the only place in Ethiopia where human fossils have been found. Other important sites include Hadar, Dakika, and Omo Kaibish. 7. In 1960, Abebe Bikila, a young Ethiopian shepherd, made history by becoming the first black African to win an Olympic gold medal. He did it in the marathon, and he did it barefoot, Bikila was born in 1932 in a small village in Ethiopia. He began running as a child, and he quickly showed a natural talent for the sport. In 1959, he was selected to represent Ethiopia at the 1960 Summer Olympics in Rome. At the Olympics, Bikila stunned the world by winning the marathon barefoot. He crossed the finish line in a time of 2 hours 15 minutes and 16 seconds, setting a new world record. His victory was a watershed moment for African athletics, and it inspired a generation of African runners. Bikila went on to win a second Olympic gold medal in the marathon in 1964. He also won several other major marathons, 
including the Boston Marathon in 1967, Bikila's legacy is one of inspiration and determination. He showed the world that anything is possible if you set your mind to it. He is a true hero of African athletics, Bikila was a member of the Ethiopian Imperial Bodyguard, and he had to get permission from his superiors to compete in the Olympics, he trained for the marathon by running barefoot on the rough terrain of Ethiopia, he was not the favorite to win the marathon in Rome, but he surprised everyone with his dominant performance. His victory was a major turning point for African athletics, and it helped to inspire a generation of African runners. Bikila was a humble and unassuming man, and he never forgot his roots. He used his fame to promote education and development in Ethiopia. He was a national hero in Ethiopia. 8. Addis Ababa's name translate to New Flower. It was given to the city by Empress Taidu, the wife of Emperor Menelik II, when she founded it in 1886. The city was built on a plateau surrounded by hills and mountains, and the Empress was inspired by the beauty of the natural surroundings. She saw the city as a new beginning for Ethiopia, and she wanted the name to reflect that, the name Addis Ababa has also been interpreted as meaning new light or new hope. This is because the city was founded at a time when Ethiopia was undergoing a period of political and social change. The Empress saw the city as a symbol of Ethiopia's future, and she wanted the name to reflect that. Today, Addis Ababa is the capital of Ethiopia and the largest city in the country. It is a major cultural, economic, and political center. The name Addis Ababa continues to be a source of inspiration for Ethiopians, and it reminds them of the city's bright future. 9. Ethiopia is home to some of the world's tastiest, healthiest and most diverse cuisines on the continent of Africa. Ethiopia is a country with a rich and diverse culinary tradition, dating back thousands of years. The country's cuisine is characterized by its use of fresh, local ingredients, its bold flavors, and its emphasis on plant-based foods. One of the most iconic dishes of Ethiopian cuisine is injera, a spongy flatbread made from teff flour. Injera is used to scoop up other dishes, such as wats, which are stews made with meat, vegetables, and spices. Ethiopian cuisine is not only delicious, but it is also healthy. Many Ethiopian dishes are vegan or vegetarian, and the use of fresh, local ingredients ensures that the food is packed with nutrients. 10. The biggest festival in Ethiopia, Timkit, is a three-day annual festival that honors the baptism of Jesus Christ in the River Jordan. It's one of the world's largest festivals that takes place annually. The festival attracts millions of people from all over the world. The festival takes place in January or February, depending on the Ethiopian calendar. The festival begins with a procession of the Tabit, a replica of the Ark of the Covenant. The Tabit is carried through the streets of the town or city where the festival is being held. The procession is accompanied by singing, dancing, and drumming. On the second day of the festival, there is a reenactment of the baptism of Jesus Christ. A priest wades into a river or lake and blesses the water. People then come forward to be baptized. The third day of the festival is a day of celebration. There is more singing, dancing, and drumming. People feast on traditional foods and drink tej, a honey wine. 11. Ethiopia has many UNESCO World Heritage Sites on the continent. Ethiopia takes second place as the African country with the most UNESCO World Heritage Sites. There are nine total ranging from religious sites to natural areas. Among them are the Simeon National Park, Konso Cultural Landscape and the Rock Hewn Churches. One of the most popular UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Ethiopia is the Simeon National Park. This park is located in the northern part of the country and is home to a variety of endangered animals, 
including the Walia Ibex and Ethiopian Wolf. The park is also known for its stunning scenery, including its towering mountains and deep valleys. Another popular UNESCO World Heritage Site in Ethiopia is the Konso Cultural Landscape. This landscape is located in the southern part of the country and is home to a unique culture that has been practiced for centuries. The Konso people are known for their intricate stonework, which can be seen in their homes, granaries, and other structures. The rock-hewn churches of Lalabella are also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. These churches are located in the north-central part of the country and are carved directly into the rock. They are considered to be some of the most important religious sites in Ethiopia. In addition to these three sites, Ethiopia also has six other UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Aksum, this ancient city was once the capital of the Kingdom of Aksum, which was a powerful kingdom in the first millennium AD. The city is home to a number of important archaeological sites, including the ruins of the Great Obelisk of Aksum, Fazl Gebi, Gondar region, this fortified palace complex was built in the 17th century by Emperor Facilitas. It is considered to be one of the most important examples of traditional Ethiopian architecture, Harajugul. This walled city is located in the eastern part of Ethiopia and is considered to be one of the holiest cities in Islam. The city is known for its narrow streets, traditional architecture, and vibrant culture, Lower Valley of the Awash. This valley is located in the eastern part of Ethiopia and is home to a variety of wildlife, including elephants, lions, and cheetahs. The valley is also known for its stunning scenery, including its waterfalls and gorges, Lower Valley of the Omo. This valley is located in the southwestern part of Ethiopia and is home to a number of different ethnic groups. The valley is also known for its unique cultures and traditions. Taya, this archaeological site is located in the central part of Ethiopia and is home to a number of stele, or standing stones. The stele are decorated with various symbols, and their purpose is still unknown. The country is a treasure trove of historical and cultural significance, and these sites are a testament to its rich and diverse past. 12. There are over 80 languages spoken with English being the language of educational systems in addition to local languages which include Guizi, Amharic, Aramo, Somali, and Tigrinya. Guizi is an ancient Ethiopian Semitic language. Today, Giez is used as the main liturgical language of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo Church and Eritrean Orthodox Tuahedo Church. Amharic is the most widely spoken language, used by about 65% of the population. It is the language of government, business, and education. Aramo is the second most widely spoken language, used by about 30% of the population. It is the native language of the Aramo people. Somali is spoken by about 6% of the population. It is the native language of the Somali people who live in the eastern and southern parts of Ethiopia, Tigrinya is spoken by about 5% of the population. It is the native language of the Tigrinya people, who live in the northern parts of Ethiopia. Other major languages spoken in Ethiopia include Afar, Gurage, Harari, and Sidamo. The diversity of languages in Ethiopia is a reflection of the country's rich cultural heritage. 13. Over half of Africa's mountains are in Ethiopia along with Ethiopia's incredible cultural and historical significance, the natural beauty is in a league of its own. In addition to a gorgeous landscape of low deserts and volcanic plateaus, Ethiopia is incredibly mountainous. In fact, around 70% of Africa's mountains are in Ethiopia, in addition to its mountains, Ethiopia also has a varied landscape that includes low deserts, volcanic plateaus, and lush forests. This diversity of terrain is home to a wide variety of plant and animal life, 
making Ethiopia a biodiversity hotspot. 14. Ethiopia is Africa's oldest country, with a rich and ancient history dating back over 7,000 years. It is believed to be the site of the first human settlement in Africa, and its capital city, Addis Ababa, is one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. Ethiopia was founded in 1500 BC, making it the oldest independent nation on the continent. It has a long and proud history of resistance to foreign domination, and was never colonized by a European power. This unique status has given Ethiopia a special place in the hearts of many Africans, and it is often referred to as the land of the free. 15. Ethiopia is the only country in Africa with its own distinct alphabet, which is called the Ethiopic alphabet. The Ethiopic alphabet is an abugida, which means that each consonant has a basic vowel sound associated with it. Vowels can be modified by adding diacritics to the consonant. The Ethiopic alphabet is used to write the Guizhi language, as well as several other languages spoken in Ethiopia and Eritrea. It has 26 consonants and 7 vowels, but can be used to represent a total of 345 sounds. The Ethiopic alphabet is written from left to right, and is usually written in vertical columns. It is a very expressive alphabet, and can be used to create intricate and beautiful calligraphy.